And okay, this is not good. As we were traveling along, I was not paying attention and we ran into Hold King Mulgrim Ironforge who has 231 troops, we have 71. I don't think winning this is gonna be all that possible. There is a way to get out of this though if we do kill a few of his troops. I think we can retreat. And also this ability Void of Death does pretty good damage. I'm not sure if it works on dwarves though, but I think this is one of our AOE spells. Um, I'm gonna try to use it on, that's a lot of dwarves. Oh. I got taken out instantly, but what the heck? How many troops did we just kill? We just killed 117 with that AOE. What? Man, that really sucks that I got taken out because we could actually win this. Wait, let's charge them again. I have a healing potion too. Let's use the healing potion. And then yeah, let's try to use that ability again without getting taken out this time. We just got so many level ups, I bet. Yeah, we just got seven level ups, I think, off of just that one ability. Let's put three points into Agi so we can get four riding. And we can also get four shield as well. And then we can get more in athletics too. I usually don't go for this stuff, but since we're level 14, we're going to be getting a lot of level ups here we could also go above 30 strength too because yeah i think our power strike can go up to 15 so let's just dump points into strength now these dwarves do not seem to want to charge in they're doing the whole dance in circles thing just use void of death right there and yeah they killed a good amount of them they're not that clumped though not like they were before and all right these dwarves are not charging in i was able to wait for void of death to come back up and it's got a long cooldown and we're just gonna try to void of death in that area did i hit anything no i don't think so i think it's got dropped to it Crap. Okay, I think they're finally charging. They have been sitting there for what seems like ages. And here we go. Oh, that was a fat one, I think. We missed their giant slayers, but yeah. We took out 46 just now with that hit. And here's our troop loadout. We got a bunch of zombies, which are not going to be that useful. And we're going to try to just distract. We do have Void of Death coming back up soon, which is nice. And that did no damage. By the way, if you guys are wondering my difficulty, here it is. It's on normal. So we're taking full damage just like everyone else. Yeah, we need to get in there. and Void of Death in four seconds. It's Winds of Magic 1, though. So we cannot cast yet. Winds of Magic needs to go to something else. Was magic eight, very good. And boom, that's really good. Everyone charge now. She take the guy out. Can't even see him right now because our kill feed's bugged because we just killed so many troops. And okay, that is some kind of massive AOE from this guy up here. He's got a freaking, whatchamacallit launcher. We need to kill this guy. This is their leader. He's a master engineer. No, this is the guy though. That's the master engineer. You can see the cannon on his back and crap, he's gonna pull it out. Somebody hit him. Legolas, shoot him. Bring him down. One thing about these cannons, by the way, these master engineers. Okay, nice. He's out of ammo or something. He decided to charge in and we got him. One thing about this dude and the master engineers in general is they can hit allied troops now. They nerf them super hard and it looks like we win here which is crazy. Like if you would have asked me if it was possible to beat these guys, 220 versus R70 with like really crap units, I would have said no way. Their Lord did get away, but we did capture only five troops, surprisingly, but there's a bunch of items on the ground, some really nice dwarf boots, a somewhat decent dwarf armor, and the rest of the stuff's pretty bad. We did get a thousand gold off of that though. And yeah, we got so much XP. I think I can go past 30 strength. I'm gonna test it out though. I'll wait till we get two more points and then we can test it out to see if we can get past 10 power strike. But yeah, let's put some more points in iron flesh i think just because healing potions do top you off i believe so it's good to have a lot of max health after getting caught by that dwarf lord we headed up to the orc town of grom peak where we sold off most of the dwarf equipment we just picked up we just kept a couple of the nicer things mainly this dwarf chest piece and boots we're just saving them for a dwarf companion we might hire later i also noticed here they had a lot of iron and usually when they have a lot of some kind of trade good it's really cheap so we bought all of it and because they were mass producing so much iron here it was going to be really worth it to make an iron works for just 8,000 it would give us almost 1,500 a week which is a really good deal. We then headed back to one of the vampire towns where we were able to get a really nice profit for the iron. I think they bought it for about double the price that we originally bought it for and I decided to also pick up one of our last abilities not turn to smoke. I still don't think that thing's gonna be all that useful. I feel like the mana cost for this thing should be like 20. We're gonna buy our last AoE though for 3,300 and we're gonna go test this thing on the dwarves or that was a plan anyways before we ran into this Kislev Lord that had a Necromancer Lord as one of his prisoners and a vampire. Those are really strong troops that we could recruit to our party if we were to take him out. He does have 119 troops and we only have 74, but you guys saw in the previous battle where we got outnumbered. That did not seem to matter, although we are getting 38 renown for this. And the reason being is because we have so many crappy troops with us. So yeah, it's pretty much just going to be up to me to take these guys out. Also shout out to this comment. When you are using a shield, your magic spells can fail. But if you just put the shield in your back, apparently the game doesn't know you have a shield. And holy cow, they're grouped up. I voided deathed and 
and I think I hit a bunch of them. They do have a ward save though, casted by their Ice Mage. That's that blue bubble that was on a bunch of them, and I think it blocks the damage. I'm not sure if it blocks it from spells though, because it looks like I killed a bunch. And while they're doing that thing where they just clump up, let's use Curse of Years on that area and i think it does damage over time yeah it's dealing damage over time which is actually going to be really useful for a siege not so much here i mean it's useful here because these guys are being idiots and they're just sitting in it and okay another void of death coming up let's just use it on their cavalry oh yeah and then curse of years came back up we're just going to drop that on these dudes who are finally are charging kind of wish they would just do this right away so we wouldn't be able to win a battle like this i mean it's cool that we are able to but we should not be able to ah! quick and what the heck if they get hit by the curse they take damage over time regardless of where they move i guess because yeah that guy just got killed and that guy just got hit for something too because he winced in pain we also have another void of death that we're just gonna drop on these guys it doesn't hit our allied troops i don't believe and our archers are in the front because i'm just a great commander remember guys a great tactic when you are commanding a battlefield is you want to put your archers in front they are the tankiest this is a Bjorg cosplayer. He got the color wrong though. He needs some hair dye. And yeah, we did win that battle. A bunch of them ended up routing though when they were kind of dancing by the wall. I think they get pushed out of the battlefield or something because yeah, there's still 48 of them that are here and we're going to use our Curse of Years on them. And I think that hit a bunch of them. Oh, we're not in a good spot. We're just going to avoid a death right there, I think. Oh yeah, that is not overpowered. And here's what they have left. They have an ice switch. We got to take that girl out. Die, you witch. There we go. And all right, we were successful and we rescued those prisoners. Mainly this vampire has a weekly wage of 160, so he's gonna be really good. The Necromancer Lord also has a massive wage of 126, which this wage cost is pretty similar to a mercenary Necromancer. I'm not sure how they compare in stats though. One would think the Necromancer Lord is better because he does have eight mana control and magic power and nine magic control, which is quite a lot. Through that battle, we lost a bunch of our zombies, so we headed back home to pick up some more. And as we were doing that, we got a message from Sigmar. They're gonna offer us 7,100 for Supreme Patriot Patriarch Balthazar Gelt, which apparently is a really good wizard. Me not knowing who this guy is is probably gonna make people cringe, but I'm just not that familiar with the Warhammer lore. But yeah, we're gonna sell him off. There's nothing else we can really do with him besides let him go. After capping off our party with zombies, I decided to do a bit of limit testing on this nearby dwarf castle. It's kind of really in the middle of nowhere, and it's right by a lot of the vampire lands. So I was thinking if we were to take this out, it would be hard for the dwarves to just come over here and retake it, and the vampires might be able to help us out. And here we go. This is not a good starting place to be. Well, we can dip down here a little bit but yeah the dwarves have some really good gunmen we didn't lose too many troops yet though and i'm gonna drop a curse of years on those dwarves which okay every single circle that is above the heads of one of those dwarves means they got cursed and since our magic power and willpower and stuff is all capped out it's probably gonna kill them yeah we killed 82 already we're now gonna use some of these zombies as kind of a meat wall and we're gonna try to get a good understanding of like where we should cast void of death i actually can't see the winds of magic roll right now a bunch of their riflemen are up there let's just use it right there i think is good it failed it was probably wins of magic one that was the only way it could fail and all right void of death is back up it only has a 25 second cooldown if okay yeah there we go and we've killed 163 total when i checked recently we had killed 120 so that i think killed like 40 of them i would like to curse of years on them okay there we go we got our mana back a curse of years on a bunch of their really nice troops like they have some giant slayers over there a bunch of really tanky dwarves up there we hit what i think was the rest of their range units with another curse of years and they didn't have very many troops left so we ended up just charging in they did have i think nine of these rune priests left and i think these guys were pretty much immune to all of our magic so we had to take them out the old-fashioned way we were able to just eventually wear them down though as our necromancer kept summoning troops for us and like some of them actually came in mounted unfortunately they could not climb the ladders with their mounts i tried actually mounting one and climbing the ladders too but no but yeah we were eventually able to overrun them with numbers it was only a matter of time really because we just kept summoning troops oh that guy just fell and died of the fall damage but i got the kill for it and yeah we were victorious we lost 30 units our allies lost 30 those were all units that the necromancer lord summoned i believe and we took out 225 of them most of them ended up dying there we only captured two alive and we got nothing too crazy good as far as loot we'll take the shields though but yeah we took out the castle of karak donmar we can now plunder the spoils of war for 6500 and that actually made us gain reputation which i think is a bad thing for evil lords i think you want low reputation with evil lords and i noticed that was also happening when we raided villages so i'm 
wondering if other evil lords are going to look down on us for doing stuff like that, like plundering castles and raiding villages. After taking out the castle, we were heading back to some of the vampire villages to pick up some more zombies, and 11 dwarf veteran warriors are now following us because most of our troops are knocked out. We only have six that are still up, and yeah, here's our trusty troops that are still up. We do have the necromancer lord still up, though, so he's going to probably be able to summon some troops to help us in our battle against these pesky dwarves who thought they could take us, but... Unfortunately for them, they're going to get cursed. Some of them anyways, the rest of these guys are going to get void of death. We made it back to Drakenhof, where we found a new companion. I've never seen this guy before. I think he was added pretty recently, and he's only 3,000, which seems really cheap for a ogre companion. His starting proficiencies are not that high, though, so I think that's why he's only 3k. But he is really tanky. He has 93 HP. And here's his equipment. I'm pretty sure we can't give him any better stuff, so I think it's going to be hard for him to survive. But, like, these boots are actually pretty crazy. He's got 50 leg armor, which people are going to be usually hitting his legs probably because ogres are massive. His crown evidently gives him quite a bit of head armor too, which is surprising. You wouldn't think a crown would be very good at shrugging off damage. As far as his weapon, I gave him over this ball and chain. I forget where we got it. I think we just got it from a random battle. But this thing has almost double the reach of his ogre mace he was using. I do think it's going to be just way better. It does lose a bonus against shields, and he can't use it on the cow he was riding. But the cow's a pretty crappy mount anyways, and the dude has zero riding, so who really cares about his riding combat ability? I think the extra reach on this weapon is just going to be so good for him. And okay, one more update before we go gonna go make some massive moves. Back at Waldenhof's tavern, we ran into arguably the most important companion, Joseph Bugman, and he's only 3k. The reason why this guy is so good is he has two really important party skills, six in trade, that's way higher than anyone else that we have in the party right now, which is gonna give us way better trade prices when we're selling and buying goods. And then engineer is gonna allow us to siege much quicker. In Warsword, actually, it does not take long to build ladders. It takes like eight hours, even with zero engineer. But building siege towers takes quite a while, and this is gonna cut the time of doing that down pretty significantly. Oh, and one more minor update, I guess. Sigmar wants to buy off the last Lord Prisoner we have for 6,800, which is quite a bit. I guess Valmir von Raukov is kind of a big deal. And what the heck is going on? Back in Waldenhof's tavern, I want to say like two days after we hired Bugman, we found arguably a better companion than him, Gotrek. And a lot of you guys know him from earlier on in the series. Dude has 140 HP, almost 500 proficiencies, and yeah, this guy is a beast. I would say it's probably better to give him over the Hydra Blade, and we can use his Runic Axe momentarily. I think we actually might be able to use it now. I think the AI in general is better with using one-handers, and the dude has insane amount of one-handed proficiency. And yeah, we got, I think, five level ups from the last time we checked. We're going to put six points into strength, and we can get above 10 power strike. We don't have any two-handed proficiencies, but that's okay. It shouldn't be too hard to level them up. Let's also put more points in iron flesh, and we're up to 91 HP. We are really tanky. So with Gotrek, our Necromancer Lord, and Bjorg, we headed into another dungeon. These will reset after a few days. I think it's been like a week or two since we did the dungeon but yeah we tried out difficulty 2 this time the difficulty ranges from 1 to 10 and we were actually doing pretty well room 2 was really rough it was really wide open and it was against these skaven gunmen i don't know how everyone managed to survive this room and i was not playing it very well but somehow miraculously no one ended up getting knocked out here this is really awkward to watch i'm sure oh, okay is anyone getting killed yet i'm not doing any really micro here Get him. Nice. I'm low. Wait, healing potion? Okay, few. It was on room three where I messed up pretty bad. I casted Void of Death, trying to hit some units that I think were through the wall. Because our units were all looking at the wall and they were kind of bugging out. Apparently this spell can hit non-undead allies though, and I ended up knocking out Bjorg with it. So moving on to the next dungeon, it was just me, Gotrek, and our Necromancer Lord. This shaman was really close to the entrance, and I decided just to duel on myself, thinking I could just own him in melee, but he casted Headbutt, which did 166 damage. And yeah, needless to say, we got knocked out there and that was it for our difficulty 2 dungeon attempt. The dwarves ended up retaking the castle we took earlier so we went back to it and there was only 60 units here defending it so we were easily able to take it out like just with this void of death. We took out 30 of their 60 units. It ended up kind of working in our favor that they retook the castle because we got 2800 dinars from taking it back over. Taking over a castle seems like not a bad way to farm money. But yeah that will be it for this episode as I'm trying to get these out every day and it's been a day and three hours since I uploaded the last one. I think the goal with these is I'm just going to try to get as much done as possible possible every day. In the next one we might try to take on a dwarf town, but the dwarves are no longer at war with the vampires, so they're going to be able to easily respond to that. So I'm not really sure how easy it's going to be to attack them. We might try to attack someone else. But yeah, with that, I want to thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.